what I discover is when I hear um, Black Lives Matter, when I hear um, Antifa, when I hear Democrats railing against America, that America is uh, such an awful place, um, I have to ask myself a question. Um, have you seen the rest of the world? <laughs> compared to what? Yeah. Yeah, compared to what? And so I'm grading on a curve as I as I go around the world. America has her sins and her deep flaws, abortion chief among them. But America is the freest country on the face of the earth. I mentioned earlier that it seemed like the 20th century was defined by our struggle with Marxist, communist, socialist ideas. We almost destroyed Indeed. the planet over it. Do you feel like that that is going to, we're going to see a repeat of that in the 21st century? And if so, practically, what can Christians, pastors, believers do to make a difference? Well, um, I'll use this as an example. Following, in 1945, at the end of World War II, the U.S. State Department had one Russian speaker, one. Um, we weren't prepared for the Cold War um, that immediately began, you know, as, as Churchill so eloquently put it, an iron curtain fell mm. across Europe and the Cold War began and in the immediate aftermath of, um, of the Second World War. And America was caught ill-prepared. And, uh, and then the 50s come along and the Russians put up Sputnik and um, during uh, the Eisenhower administration. And there's this feeling that America is very behind in science. And the, American, uh, um, the Americans responded with, I was, I'm older than you, I suspect, but I was, um, I was taught Russian history in high school. I was taught Marxism in high school. Hmm. I was also taught the, uh, the Declaration of Independence, and I was taught the, uh, um, our Constitution, and I was, I was actually taught also the Lord's Prayer you know, in, in public school. But the point is, I was made aware of who our enemies were and what they believed and what was flawed in those beliefs. And America began to ramp up its science curriculums and ramp up curriculums on what Marxism is and what they believe. And before long, the State Department is flooded with Russian experts, and we won the Cold War uh, as a result of that. I, I feel like that, that's, a, that's a, a nice picture of where I think we find our, ourselves. We have very few people right now in the pulpit who really know what Marxism is. We have very few, very few Christians who really understand the dangers of socialism because they mistake it for Christianity, which is nothing like Christianity. I, I love what Dostoevsky, the great Russian novelist, said. He said that, that socialism is, a, is an attempt to build heaven on earth. It's the Tower of Babel in, inverse. Mm -hmm. um, that's what it is. It's an attempt to create heaven without God. And, uh, and I would go further than that. I would say that, that socialism is an idol uh, and an altar erected as rebellion against God. Uh, Marx did this quite consciously. He, he, you look at some of his early, early poetry, he was a hater of God, as Romans 1 um, would put it. So I think that we as a people... We need to become aware of who our enemies are and what it is they believe and why it's antithetical to the gospel. Well, you're coming out with a new book here soon called Around the World in More Than 80 Days, Discovering What Makes America Great and Why We Must Save It. What do you hope to communicate to, to the nation, to get people who get a hold of this book? Well, I appreciate you mentioning that book, and uh, I really hope people will buy it. Um, I was just told the other day that uh, Audible... Uh, which has 90% of the audiobook market has refused to take the book on ideological grounds. Huh. Um, meaning that's where we are. They took my previous books, but they won't take this one um, because they feel so empowered. They don't have to take Christian or conservative authors anymore. Uh, so I don't even know if there will be an audio version of the book. And uh, Amazon has 95% of the book market now. And uh, Amazon is bumping off conservative authors um, uh, on their website, not 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 killing them. <laughs> maybe that's <laughs> next. But they maybe, certainly maybe are. Maybe that's next. But that uh, that book I wrote for this reason. I've done a lot of international travel um, in my life. I've been to some fifty-five countries, and uh, I have interacted with um, with both the famous and the humble. I've uh, engaged with um, atheists and Muslims and persecuted Christians and um, with, with uh, materialists and every sort as I travel around the world. 
And uh, what, I, what I discover is when I hear um, Black Lives Matter, when I hear um, Antifa, when I hear Democrats railing against America, that America is uh, such an awful place, um, I have to ask myself a question. Um, have you seen the rest of the world? <laughs> compared to what? Yeah. Yeah, compared to what? And so I'm grading on a curve as I, as I go around the world. America has her sins and her deep flaws, abortion chief among them. Um, but America is the freest country on the face of the earth. And so as I'm going around the world, I'm basically asking this question, um, you know, how does America stack up against the rest of the world? And mm. why is it that there are North Koreas and Nigerias and Russias? And why is it that there's an America and a Britain and, and uh, others that we would point to? In other words, if human nature is the same the world over, and of course it is, how do we account for the fact that some societies are freer societies and value human life while there are others that don't? And uh, the answer to that is that there are those societies that are touched by the gospel to a greater degree and those that have not been touched by it, it seems, at all. And, uh, and the result is that those societies that have been touched by the gospel tend to be freer societies. They tend to be societies that have flourished economically, politically, in their art, in their literature. And then there are those that fall into a very different um, category there where life is extremely dangerous. Um, there's no rule of law. Um, and where people are, are treated as uh, counting for very little. And so this is the story I'm telling as I'm going around the world. Um, in this book, we, uh, we visited 27 countries. And uh, you get some of the adventure as we go along. I mean, I've shot AK-47s with uh, uh, former Viet Cong in uh, Vietnam. I rode elephants in Thailand. I, I repelled off the Great Wall of China. Um, I uh, debated Marx and Lenin impersonators in Red Square. You know, it, some of it's quite funny and, and it's fun. And a couple of my boys went with me for part of the trip and it was quite an adventure. But I'm also making a very, very serious point that this country stands on the brink. And uh, Lincoln called us the last best hope on earth. And I believe that's what we are. Well, it requires a love of the land in order to be able to pray for it. And I think we need a revival of true patriotism. And I pray that book gives birth to a love for a nation and for country. I can't thank you enough for joining with me today. We need to have you back to delve a little more into this in the future if you'll have us. Well, I'd be delighted to, Alan. It's great to be with you. Well, we're going to put links to all of your resources, your website, the upcoming book in the description below. We want every single one of our members to get a hold of those books and avail yourself to those resources. Mm -hmm.